<coughs> the second part of our laboratory today which is the second most common condition of pediatrics which is napke rash napke rash also known as napi dermatitis or diaper rash is a non-specific term used to describe inflammatory eruption of the skin in the napkin area the etiology is continuous exposure of the skin in the napkin area to the uh, irritant material or uh, to the moisture this continuous exposure will cause inflammation and irritation and inflammation of the skin in the napkin area friction and maceration of the skin <coughs> in this area Moisture will cause impairment in the skin barrier function and make the skin more susceptible for secondary infection uh, like bacterial infection or fungal infection. The clinical features of napkin rash are uh, dryness, redness, and uh, itching area in the buttox that contact with the irritant but can involve the lower abdomen and the upper thighs the flexure which are uh, protected from the exposure are usually spared differential diagnosis how we can differentiate napkin rash from the other skin conditions like secondary infection secondary fungal or bacterial infection in this area is common also Bacterial infection, if there is bacterial infection, not only inflammation or irritation of the skin, there will be a pus. This pus will yellow or green in color. So it can be differentiated from irritant, uh, irritated skin or from inflamed skin by the, uh, uh, the pus, which is uh, yellow or green in color. Secondary fungal infection, also uh, common in this area, uh, due to maceration of the skin. So candida albicans can be affected uh, the skin and cause secondary fungal infection. Uh, and uh, the bus, uh, there will be also bus here, and uh, the bus will be uh, white in color. Uh, the other skin condition which must be differentiated from napkin rash is seborrheic dermatitis but the uh, condition is different from napkin rash in the uh, location of dermatitis uh, both of them seborrheic uh, and napkin are dermatitis but the location here is the key point seborrheic dermatitis can be affect all over the body any area in the body can be affected by seborrheic dermatitis while uh, napkin rash uh, affect the napkin area only which is in contact uh, with moisture uh, all over uh, the time and uh, irritated inflamed and infected the management here is keeping the exposure or decreasing the exposure to irritant substance because it is a dermatitis. So any uh, thing that decrease the exposure to irritant will be helpful in preventing the napkin rash. Uh, this uh, occur by uh, keeping the area dry all over the time several changes of the uh, diaper will be helpful and uh, washing the area thoroughly with water and uh, soap that is gentle to this area not the soap that containing uh, aromatic uh, materials uh, that may be irritant to this area and then using a barrier cream 
after the dryness complete dryness of the skin uh, keeping the skin uh, let it dry uh, and then uh, take the diaper and uh, put uh, a barrier cream like pseudo cream on the uh, area in order to prevent irritation and to prevent direct contact with irritants which is the moisture here if the rash does not disturb the baby and not discomfort him here the protectant cream are the choice which are uh, uh, pseudo cream as I mentioned before or zinc castor oil zinc oxide all of them are protectant cream that uh, we can put a thick layer of it all over the area in order to prevent it uh, from uh, contact with moisture protectant cream are suitable for all babies and for all skin types for causing uh, for cases that cause discomfort to the baby this may, uh, may be due to secondary infection with candida albicans or with uh, bacteria so if uh, with bacterial uh, infection uh, the referral to the GP is uh, the treatment or the management uh, if the secondary infection is fungal with candida albicans so uh, imidazole as an OTC medication uh, can be used twice daily and uh, should be continued after the disappearance of the infection uh, for two days Parents should be told not to, be, to use the barrier cream until the infection has settled where the child is distressed and there are obvious signs of inflammation then referral is needed for steroids so it is very important that not use steroid in the community pharmacy in order not to worse the infection and uh, convert it from the fungal infection to bacterial infection by decreasing the immunity in this area how to prevent napkin rash as we mentioned before that the prevention is the key point for the treatment and uh, we can prevent napkin rash by leaving the nappy area off for as long as possible each day avoid using soaps for cleaning avoid using these uh, wipes for cleaning of the area because it's containing alcohol containing aromatic materials that is uh, scratch or irritate the area and worsen the condition washing the nabi roughly with water to ensure, to ensure complete cleaning of the uh, area from any soap or any detergent and then let it dry as long as possible and continuous before uh, putting uh, the diaper to the baby and uh, continuous uh, and several and frequent uh, changing the diaper every two hours in order to ensure uh, that the area is dry as possible as we can so till now napkin rash is over and we here will go to the other pediatric condition which is infantile colic before we go to the infantile colic i remember uh, some treatments that are uh, present in the community pharmacy and we can use it for the treatment of this area as I mentioned, imidazole is the drug of choice because, because it is an OTC medication. We can also, that approved by the FDA as an OTC medication for napkin rash. There are also other uh, 
antifungal infection like clotrimazole, mycanazole, uh, nystatin, and other. Uh, but the, all of them are not approved by FDA as an uh, OTC medication that used for NAPK rash. Also, there are a cream that contain uh, compl uh, any, a complex of uh, many or four or three uh, drugs that are steroid, antibacterial, and antifungal uh, material or medication. All of them are in one single tube. This is uh, this type of cream should be avoided in order to avoid the steroid in them that is not OTC medication and uh, can be decided uh, to given to the baby only by the GP in order not to do to worse the condition and convert it from the uh, symbol. Uh, irritation or inflammation to secondary infections of uh, bacteria or fungi. Here we can uh, go to other pediatric condition which is infantile colic. What is infantile colic? Colic is a pain. Pain in the abdomen lower or upper abdomen that discomfort the baby causing uh, excessive crying of the baby okay this crying will uh, can how we can differentiate this crying from simple crying of the baby there are a lot of signs and symptoms that associated with this crying beside the quality of the crying is also the key point. The signs and symptoms that associated with crying in the infantile colic is flushing of the face, clenching fists, knees drawn up to the chest during crying, excessive gases, Okay, as we mentioned, how we can differentiate this colic or this crying due to colic or due to the normal crying of the baby uh, at this age. As we mentioned before, from the symptoms that uh, associated with the uh, crying, that uh, flushing face, excessive gases, clenched fist, uh, knees down uh, up to the chest and other symptoms but these are the four important symptoms and the other feature of this crying is the rule of three what is the rule of three? The infant will continue crying for three hours or more than three hours a day for more than three days a week and for more than three weeks. This crying usually starts at the age of one month and usually ends at the age of four to six months. Regardless of which definition is used, persistent crying is a cause of stress and anxiety to the children and to his parents. So, this problem should be solved. The etiology of this crying is um, immature GIT and disorder of GIT due to immaturity. So, spasm will occur and contraction of GIT muscles will occur causing pain and colic and discomfort and gas production uh, to the baby. These are the clinical features. 
Okay, the crying quality and the associated symptoms as we mentioned it. The history of crying in order to differentiate this crying from other uh, causes of crying. Yeah, and the cause of crying is uh, colic due to colic or to another cause like acute infection, which is the most common cause of uh, crying in this age. Uh, the uh, crying due to acute infection is sudden, normally sudden, while crying due to infantile colic is, uh, due, uh, is usually long standing. And as we mentioned, the rule of three, uh, three hours persistent crying, and uh, for three days a week, for three weeks uh, per month, and for three months usually. Aggravating factors of this crying hunger we should eliminate the, the aggravating factors for crying of the baby like hunger thirst being too hot or too cold during uh, during sleep time uh, trapped wind and other causes these questions should be asked to the mother in, do in order to eliminate the causes of crying from the colic cause of crying. The cause, <coughs> the crying quality of crying during uh, infantile colic uh, will be uh, like episodes. Episodes of screaming, uh, attacks lasting a few minutes at a time, then rests for uh, minutes or <coughs> and then uh, continue to scream and crying and then rest. These episodes of screaming, crying and rest is coming uh, during uh, infantile colic. How we can differentiate this uh, crying from another condition? As we mentioned, the another condition uh, that uh, caused crying and discomfort to the baby is acute infection. But as we mentioned, the history of crying, uh, the um, associated symptoms of crying is different between acute infection and between infantile colic. As we mentioned, acute infection is sudden crying and do not be long for three weeks or three months. Uh, it is sudden and goes as infection is goes. The other cause is GERD, gastroesophageal reflex disease. Gastroesophageal reflex disease is also associated with uh, vomiting usually and is uh, also common in this age uh, until from birth until uh, six months of uh, age of the baby uh, GERD is common due to uh, immaturity or um, uh, immaturity of the sphincter between uh, esophageal and stomach uh, gastroesophageal reflex disease will occur and vomiting will occur associated with it and uh, this can be uh, a cause of crying of the baby especially after the vomiting uh, the crying will be increased how we can manage infantile colic Infantile colic reassurance of the parents is very important that we talk to the mother this uh, crying and this colic will go uh, and uh, spontaneously uh, managed uh, after uh, six months of life uh, of the baby and the children's symptom will disappear over time. Their baby is well and they are not doing something wrong and everything is uh, under control then we give them the most 
uh, important and safe drug, which is Samificon oral drug, which is an OTC medication that uh, came to uh, in the pharma uh, in the community pharmacy as uh, oral uh, suspension drop. Uh, this drops. Uh, usually used five to ten drops uh, three to four times a day uh, with feeding uh, if the baby is bottle feeding uh, we can put these drops after good shaking uh, of the uh, bottle uh, give uh, this uh, medication or give these drops putting them in the milk in the bottle and give them to the baby or uh, during a breastfeed, we can uh, drop this uh, medication in a teaspoonful and give them to the baby or directly uh, in the mouth of the baby, 5 to 10 uh, or 5 to 15 uh, drops are usually, according, uh, are usually used according to the age of the uh, baby, uh, 3 to 4 times uh, daily. Uh, and uh, this will decrease the uh, discomfort, increase gas uh, appearance, and uh, it have anti foaming effect. So decrease the surf, uh, surface tension, allowing easier elimination of gases from the gut, and uh, decrease the colic. So decrease the discomfort and decrease crying. These are the Simethicon oral drops that are present in the community pharmacy. These are examples of them. Colic ease and baby rest. Here we uh, should mention that there is another uh, medications in the uh, community pharmacy like herbal medications. Herbal medications like a gray. Uh, grape water اللي هو الماي الغريب uh, or uh, البونيسان بونيسان oral drops or بونيسان oral uh, suspension or syrup بونيسان and uh, grape water these are herbal medications بونيسان is uh, for Himalaya company and it is an Indian, uh, while uh, grape water uh, is usually uh, Syrian or uh, from Jordan or another sources. Uh, these are herbal medications that is not fully studied uh, in the babies. So uh, they, they yes, they have anti-foaming effect and they rest, causing rest to the baby and causing the baby to fall in the sleep. But it is wrong to give in to the baby. Why? Because it is a herbal medication and is not fully studied in the patient or in this uh, baby. So we go to the more safe drug, which is cymethicone. Another uh, wrong medication that is used to such condition, which is finasteel oral drop. Finasteel is uh, oral drop is an antihistamine. Antihistamine that is used to uh, uh, cause uh, the baby to fall in the sleep and uh, decrease uh, this uh, condition of crying and uh, while the colic which is the cause of crying will still be there so uh, it is wrong to uh, it is very important to uh, tell the mother that uh, using of uh, uh, steel oral drop is not the key point here is it is wrong to use antihistamine to treat such condition. Another OTC medication that can be used for such condition is lactase enzyme. Lactase enzyme will break down the lactose in the milk to the more simple uh, sugars, which is glucose and galactose. Uh, this degradation to this uh, more simple sugar will uh, cause decrease in gas uh, production and decrease in colic 
symptoms. So decrease in crying. This is lactase drug that's uh, present in community pharmacy, which can be also used for infantile colic. Here, infantile colic part is end, and we can go to the fourth part of our lecture today, which is the thread worm. What is thread worms? Thread worm is an infection with worms that are extremely common in our community pharmacy both in the developed and developing countries. Thread worm, which is the most common uh, infection with bin worm, not with uh, another type of worm, is common in Western countries, which is a condition that causes uh, inconvenience and embarrassment to the father, uh, to the parents, and to the baby. It is more common in babies in the preschool and the school uh, age. Uh, more common in this age than in adult, but it can be uh, adult can be infected with them if there is a children in the uh, same house that have uh, an infection with pinworm by using the same. Um, uh, toilet uh, by uh, using or uh, washing the all uh, the underwears of uh, all uh, the family in the same uh, washing machine so the uh, eggs can be uh, can be transferred or from the children to the parents and so on reinfection will occur in the same family due to uh, the these eggs uh, and uh, this cycle of the eggs so personal hygiene is very very important here and uh, uh, the etiology of this infection is auto infection. How we can auto infect ourselves with pinworm by fecal oral route? So, here uh, another important that uh, personal hygiene is very, very important in order to uh, prevent the auto infection, the retro infection. When the larva back into the colon and inhalation of the eggs, that uh, we uh, it is very important to ensure or to advise that uh, the uh, to the mother that the eggs can be uh, transferred from uh, one person or one child to the other by inhalation. So the eggs can. The transfer from the fingers after the washing of the rectum and uh, these eggs can transfer to the toys or to any equipment uh, that uh, touched by the baby or by children and this these eggs can be inhaled by another person or by another child uh, and cause infection to him. What are the symptoms? The most common symptoms is night itching. Night itching of the rectum, uh, which can cause uh, scratching, irritation of the area of the rectum because of continuous itching, and uh, scratching of this area can cause secondary infection with uh, fungi or, bac or bacteria. Sleep disturbances can occur also, resulting from uh, this uh, scratching and itching during night. We uh, should eliminate another condition from threadworm infection, 
which are uh, the infection with other uh, worms like roundworm or tapeworm. This can be eliminated by laboratory uh, tests. Uh, we take a uh, feces uh, specimen and uh, take it to the uh, laboratory in order to be tested, in order to uh, differentiate it uh, or, or to diagnose the common or causative agent of this infection. Another condition to be eliminated here is contact irritant, irritant dermatitis. Contact irritant dermatitis can also be caused in this area due to the exposure to irritant substance like uh, the detergent that uh, uh, washing, uh, used for uh, washing of underwears. These uh, detergents can cause contact irritant dermatitis to this area. So should be differentiated on the laboratory test is the key point. How we can treat such a condition? The father came to the pharmacy asking for a treatment for his baby and uh, or for his children and uh, came, uh, told you that this infection is recurrent and uh, it can be uh, cannot be treated so As we say, the mother or the father came to the pharmacy asking for a treatment for the recurrent condition of uh, their children uh, with the pinworm infection and uh, that uh, discomfort during sleep uh, is the main compliance and uh, the itching is uh, embarrassment to the uh, uh, parents and to the uh, children. So, how we can deal with this condition? Uh, this condition should, uh, the, uh, the advice is that the personal hygiene is very, very important uh, for all of family members. The, um, uh, the washing of the underwear of the uh, children should be, uh, or the infected children should be uh, uh, separated from the uh, washing of the underwear of another uninfected or not infected uh, children or from the parents uh, and uh, the treatment should be uh, used for all family members at the same time in order to uh, ensure the uh, treatment and to prevent reoccurrence of the infection. The treatment to be used, the OTC medications that can be used in this condition is Mupendazole for uh, two years and over baby or children and Piperazine uh, from uh, six months and over. Piperazine is uh, in the pharmacy as uh, sachet and mimindazole is uh, present as uh, suspension, oral suspension or oral tablet. Uh, 100 milligram per 5 ml of suspension or 100 milligram per tablet. The dose is 100 milligram per tablet. And this uh, dose should be uh, should be the dose of mibindazole and piperazine should be uh, reused or uh, uh, after ten days, seven to ten days, in order to ensure uh, that the new uh, eggs or the new uh, pin worm after uh, the, egg, the opening of the eggs uh, to be killed because mibindazole and uh, piperazine does not kill the eggs so the dose should be 
uh, used again after 7 to 10 uh, days. Here are Mibindazol brand name which is Vermox. Vermox is Mibindazol 100 mg per tablet or 100 mg per 5. Mils. There is another dose that uh, 5 uh, ml of uh, suspension 2 times daily for 3 uh, days, for 3 uh, continuous days. Uh, this dose or uh, 2 tablets per a day for 3 days, this dose for another condition. This is for not pinworm infection. The dose for pinworm in infection as I mentioned before is 1 tablet and reused again after 10 days or 5 ml and reused again after 10 days and uh, tell the mother to shake the suspension well before usage the best time to take the dose is uh, before bedtime for the adult and uh, du uh, during waking time at early morning for the children. This is the table of the dose of piperazine, which is from three months to one year, 0.5 teaspoonful of powder, one year to six year, one teaspoonful for uh, the powder from the powder and six years old and older one and older was socket uh, per day for children giving at morning as I mentioned before while for adult at night and thank you this is all about our lecture about pediatric condition we take four pediatric conditions which are uh, oral thrush, napkin rash, threadworm infection, and <clears throat> infantile colic. And thank you for your listening. Enjoy. I wish that you enjoy our lecture and see you again in the next lecture.